Okay, uh, this is the meeting of the Bristol Planning Commission, December 20th, 2016. Uh, I'm John Elder. Katie Raycroft Meyer. Chris Burley. Bill Burr. Bill Sayer. Great, thank you all for coming. And uh, we're, we're glad to be able to convene the meeting. And um, let me just mention um, that there will be a change in the agenda tonight. Um, one of our members, Anna, was too sick to come, and so we don't have a quorum for the fuller proposal because Katie will have to recuse herself for that. So that particular item, number three in our agenda, will have to be deferred. And, and when we when we get down to that, we'll I want to run some dates by people because we really should do it uh, in January. Yeah. Have a quick meeting for them. Um, so that's our change of agenda. Uh, I, I have some um, reports on the uh, select board's uh, follow-up on our proposals, which I'll bring under administrative matters. But first we have um, a couple of um, public hearings, and they each have to be formally uh, open. So I'm going to open the public hearing on item one, which is uh, our follow-up on the design review committee uh, requesting a permit uh, on the on part of Rite Aid to install a storage container, mm -hmm. we sent to a Rite Aid uh, our questions about whether they could do some screening. They indicated that uh, they were going to send that question up to the corporate folks, yeah. and nothing has come from them yet. So therefore, um, I'm going to uh, call for a motion to close this hearing. Uh, postponing it to a date certain, as they say, and I'd like to propose that that date certain be in January when we're going to have to have another hearing anyway. Now, um, in terms of January, we were not going to have had a meeting. I, I think this next meeting might not be too long since, since it'll just be part of tonight's agenda. Um, one, one date that was suggested, just in a little informal poll before we got started, was January 10th, which is actually the second Tuesday. Do people who are here now know if they're available on January 10th? There's one person that looks like he can be. Okay, that's one, two. I think I can. There's nothing on my calendar at the moment. Okay, I can make it two. So we, we have a quorum. Let's say January 10th, there's, there's and I will contact uh, Fuller's, okay. and I will also uh, talk with Eric about following up with uh, Rite Aid to see if they can have something to us by then. Um, does anybody have a motion to close and uh, and re reschedule for a date certain? I'll make so move. Second. Okay, uh, Bill, you wanted to say something, Bill Brown, before. Uh, well, let's vote. Let's go on and vote for that. Shall, shall we vote on that? All all in favor of closing this hearing? Aye. Okay. Aye. And, and then it'll be January tenth if that's the meeting. Bill, you had a comment about about this. Well, I just hope that uh, corporate doesn't uh, postpone this meeting until May. You know where they will have no no further use for that container. So I, I think it's you know pretty unconscionable. I mean, come on. Um, they used this uh, container last year without a permit. Now they want to continue this year. Um, we're a little town, and they're a big, huge corporation. I don't give a damn. Mm -hmm. I want response from them. Can you refresh my memory as to what the issue is? Yes, design review um, sent to us uh, uh, their recommendation of allowing them to keep their storage unit. It's a it's a big sort of a like a pod, a metal pod, uh, next to their store on the east side, because. Um, why was it they couldn't build? There was they, a reason they, they couldn't they build. They wanted it. to store extra inventory, especially extra no, inventory that they Christmas. got from for Christmas. Right. Okay. And so we, uh, what we uh, ended up saying was, um, we would like them to consider a design for uh, some fencing, so that it would not be part of what's facing the, that central sort of parking area. Just just a sort of simple wooden fencing of some kind, or, screening of, some or screening of some kind, and that's. That's what we relayed to Rite Aid and what they relayed. Uh, and I understand your point too, Bill, about this. Um, my sense is it's, it's possible, as the, as the date goes on, that we're not going to hear by this holiday season. 
Uh, but but I think that uh, what that sets up for is that next year they would not be allowed to have the unit there at all. And perhaps we need to communicate that this is their time to help plan and be proactive. But uh, yeah, I think it's a nice way to put it. Yeah. yeah. So I'll, the, I'll meet again with the acting manager. Or the yeah. Good. I mean, and Eric yeah. also went and measured the back. It's only eight feet. And yes. They sent her. I guess sent her an email. Yes. And so that can't. Correct. Be a, a possible. So the screening is it, and, and something simple could could yeah. do. And in all reality, what the way they need to access that into their facility, there's no door on the north side of the store. So in inclement right. weather, which is when they need the box there, honestly, accessing it is not viable for the for the building. Um, the, the current tenant, whether they're um, owned by the major chain or not, they're they're dealing with holiday influx of so. Hopefully they can they can work out something like this year. It is what it is, and we get through it. And, and like you said, well, um, worst case scenario is that we basically set a precedent so that they have to deal with it before yeah. next year. I right, think right. I think this is clear. Good. And clear. I hope we can find some common ground. I would I, think so. I don't think it has to be elaborate at all. It could be a pretty minor thing. The, uh, to my understanding, our the company is being purchased by Walgreens. Correct. That is true. Cool. And so that could be uh, a co confounding factor. At this yes. Point. But good point. We'll we'll get it figured. Yeah, we'll we'll move there. I, yep. I think we will too. So anyway, um, we've 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 postponed this hearing till a date certain, which will be our next meeting. And now there will be we'll open another public hearing. This is strangely formal, but but uh, Ricky Marcel is here with us. Uh, this is uh, the meeting to uh, consider. His permit. I think everybody has the literature on this and the yep. and the plans on it. And as I understand it, um, the proposal is to reduce the number of lots from six to five. Right. Ricky, would you like to say something to us about it? So I have copies from the state. If anybody wants, I just need these back if you would. I don't have them sure. everybody, but okay. Okay. share everything. Um, sure. This is the updated map. And I've talked to Eric and Kevin Rose, and Kevin told me if I don't do six down to five that at 250 was going to get involved so he, yeah he proposed that to me and i said there's not a problem um so that's the main reason just to avoid having to go through all that right and it's just gonna it's just gonna prolong everything and mm -hmm. then just a bunch more money involved and so on and so yeah. on so i agreed and then you know we talked about possibly going back to lot adding lot six back because we have a, i think it's a five-year grace period Possibly down the road. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you can always subdivide a lot as long as it falls within the standard. Right. right. And everybody in their in their uh, the stuff that we got, there's a map on two sides. Mm -hmm. The one map that has the line down the middle. Right. That's the six lot. That's exactly. And on yep. the back. Right. It's gone. So all that's the other exactly lots are exactly, exactly as they that's, were. Right. You just that's one big lot now. That's right. going to be one big lot from the brook all the way back. Nothing else changes in the Nothing else All changes. these are just the same lines. Exactly. Everything else there stays the yep. same. Yep. Correct. Does wow. It, does anybody have any that's questions about this? Well, no. That's oh, terrific. Oh, oh, oh. Sounds like a smart move. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's yeah. going to save a ton of money in the end. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, and it's not really affecting no. what you do. Nope, not at all. So I'll, I'll make a motion to um, accept the proposal um, to reduce the lots from six down to five. All right. A second. Motion. Uh, any further discussion no. from from the audience? Board, shall we vote? Absolutely. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Perfect. Great. Thank you so much. Good job. Great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that simplifies the world. A little bit of goes a long way. Yeah. Yeah. You're usually reducing the, the number is easier than coming in. Yeah. Yeah. We want to get 40 yeah. now. Yeah. We're we're may, we may be back in a few years. That's fine. It'll be a while. We'll, we'll be we still have it. We'll have it. We'll have it. Good job. Okay. Thank you. So uh, we're closing this hearing. Uh, Eric, do I have to have a motion closing a hearing for formal reasons? Yes. Or not? Yeah, let's no? Okay. A motion to close the hearing. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Now, number three, as you all know, we've had to cancel for tonight because we didn't have a, a, a five, five person, five voting people. Uh, again, we'll we'll postpone this till a date certain. And we're going to try to we're going to yeah. open the bidding with January 10th and try to 
Yeah, yeah this would have been enough except for that one. Katie has to recuse herself. That's why we don't have five for that one. Yes. Well, <laughs> well, it doesn't matter now. It doesn't matter. Well, because I, I brought, if, if I can talk about this. Well, this was a little weird. Um, we are no I mean, we did work for Robert. We are no longer. We're done. And he, we didn't even, I was, we didn't even know he was coming. Oh, so, so you, you wouldn't need to recuse yourself? Well, I don't know. I mean, I just assumed I would. No. Um, so that's why Sue I Sue was Sue. assuming you were. Well, I told Sue. Yeah. That I, okay. That's why she was assuming it. I okay. said that. But then I just was thinking about it. I mean, as I said to Eric, it doesn't really matter to me. I mean... I mean, I, I, I have so, an opinion, of so, so course, but so does everybody else. So the only thing I would say, Katie, is um, I, if I was in your shoes and I would lose myself, you know, I just want to say that, is if during the process you, you don't want to hamper yourself from possible being involved in the project. And right, I, and which I mean, we might, I, it makes sense, too, but then I just thought, I thought, well, if it was like holding everything up, but then I think if we have the bodies, I mean, to me, if, if I was in your shoes, I would in a heartbeat, just that way it doesn't hamstring you potentially. No, I, yeah, I, I would. I mean, I was planning on it. It never even occurred to me until then after I was like, well, but. I think so too. Yeah, it's fine. So, so no, is this something I was interested? Uh, it just occurred to me. It's like, well, when are you not involved? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it was like six years later down the road. So we're but we're so postponing this one too to the same date, certain. We think it might be the tenth. We'll run it by everybody. Exactly. That meeting opened. So you opened the public meeting for that. And, and now I have to close it. Did, did we actually open it? Well, no, it hasn't. Why? Because we're gonna. We can't. Yeah. So, so I need it's to a schedule a public hearing, so yeah, I don't, I don't think you can in a fully postpone it. You have to open it and then keep it open. Oh, you can cancel that. So, okay. So I've opened. Or you can just open, uh, continue it to a date certain where you opened it today. Oh, I bet it just stays open. All right. So definitely, definitely. So I, I have opened it. I am opening it. It is open. So now you're just going to postpone it until the 10th. And so we have a, have a vote to postpone it to the 10th? So anybody that was involved well, then, on the original one, we don't have to repeat it because they should have been here tonight. Good. Okay. All, all in favor of postponing the 10th? Aye. 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 Is our date certain? A phrase I can't use often enough to please me. <laughs> okay. Now we have an item that is not on the list. Uh, are you Mr. Landy? I am. Lincoln Landy? Yes. Okay. Uh, Lincoln Landy is here on behalf of Grow Solar about a proposed uh, solar array on 116. They are not required by law to have us vote on this, but his company would like to be part of a little bit more communication with the re with the region, which we're, yeah, we're thinking is best practices. So thank you for coming, and we look forward to hearing about the project. Great, yeah, thanks. Would you like to just start by giving us your overview? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Actually, I brought a handout as well. There's some extras. If this is just no need to look at it now necessarily, but gives an overview of Grow Solar, who we are, and what we're proposing, and um, just the, the you know, process background as well as we uh, as we hopefully hopefully move forward here. Um, so I don't know if you guys have. Uh, so I'm I'm. Like Lincoln Landing. I work for a company called Grow Solar. We're based out of White River Junction, Vermont. Um, a little bit about us first, just background. Um, so we've been in business about 18 years. The company was actually founded in Vermont. And started out in the residential business. Did uh, had, a, had, a, had a distribution solar business across the U.S. And primary business has always been in Vermont. So about 2010, and we sold off our residential business to Solar City, and really to focus on the utility commercial scale, um, which is what we do now. Um, so we do projects for you know people or utilities like Green Mass Power, and we're actually doing a, 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 a portfolio of projects now. Um, for Green Mountain Power that are under construction, you may have heard about them. Um, they're based in you know, Williston, Richmond, Williamstown, Hartford, and really, really across the state. Um, so, just a little more background on Grow Solar too. Um, in more recently, actually about a year ago, um, we were acquired by uh, a company called EDM. Um, which gives us a, a good association with a, a, a national, it's actually international, um, one of the largest utilities in the world. Um, still based out of Vermont, that's our home, home base, that provides a, a good source of business for us still and uh, hopefully will long term, but it gives us a national presence. Um, which, which really has benefits you know, locally as well as nationally for us um, in, 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 in executing projects of this nature. Um, so I think in, also in the handout, if you, there are some pictures. If we go to, um, 
There's some pictures of the recent uh, Vermont projects we, that we've developed as well. So uh, the most recent portfolio of projects, it's actually just wrapping up construction now. It was a portfolio of uh, it was a portfolio. It was about 40 megawatts in total. Um, like I said, spanned across Richmond project in Richmond, which was, which was about uh, two megawatts. Um, and then the five megawatts were What's across Panton, Williamstown, um, Hartford, um, so really, really across the state. And those are all; those will actually all be operational, uh, hopefully before Christmas. So this is, this is actually the last week. We're down to the wire. Um, so that's wrapping up, um, and what we hope to, what we're looking forward to, and, and look into the future is really doing a, another round of projects. Um, so they take time to develop. That's why we're here now, just starting the conversation. Um, really, what we're looking for is, uh, you know, this is a, a 2018 time, 2018 um, build timeline. Um, so I can get into some of the specifics of what we're proposing here too. Um, so this this page inside is the same one as that, right? It is. Yep. Yes. Yep. Same one. So just a, a blow up here, and you guys may be familiar, probably familiar with the project site. So this is actually a property owned by the Saunders. Yeah. Um, so basically, right across the road from Johnson Lumber, just barely down from uh, down from there, uh, also close to the substation. Um, so this is a five megawatt AC single axis tracker project, um, which is a pretty unique project in that. Most of what we see across the state is either fixed tilt, in other words, they don't move and they just face the sun, or you know we see a lot of dual axis trackers that are rather large and you know prominent. This is different in that these just follow the sun um, uh, east to west throughout the day. Um, so actually, if we go to the in the PowerPoint slide as well, um, I did give you some pictures of a recent uh, single axis tracker. Um, that we did in Vermont. So this is the project in Panton that we just finished up. This is a five megawatt AC and is pretty much identical to what we'd be looking to do here. Uh, so these are actually projects of the Panton project. Uh, two are via aerial, which were shot earlier this fall. Um, and then one is a close up to give you a sense of what it really looks like in, in person. Um, so basically, if you, if you look at this, how, how the single axis tracker works is the rows are oriented north yeah, north south, and yeah, which is really, if you look at this. This is this is the row of trackers, and then the panel panels are mounted on top of those rows there. So, oriented north south, and then throughout the day, the panels track the uh, track the sun from east to west. Um, and what that does compared to something like a fixed tilt is it generates uh, a little bit more power, makes the system more economical. Um, so this is a five megawatt AC system again, located on about approximately 30, um, just over 30 acres of the Saunders property. Um, so we have to have a full wetland delineation done of the property and um, just to kind of define our boundaries and, and Sorry, yeah, sure. I just had a question related to what you just said. Oh, yeah. So the Saunders are retaining ownership and leasing exactly, to, yes. to yep. your company. Correct. Okay. And yeah. Still, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And, and just to clarify, I would really classify what we're doing now as still the exploratory phase. Mm -hmm. You know, we have done a good amount of diligence and, and uh, you know, looking for rare plants or wetlands and things like that. Um, but there's just a number of things that still need to come together to really make this work. And that part of that is coming to you guys, um, you know, and, and trying to get your support. Really, see what questions we can answer or what we can do to, you know, get the town on board and uh, move forward from that perspective. Another aspect of this that we're still exploring is the interconnection perspective. And um, we do think this is a very good site for, uh, you know, interconnecting to the grid, basically, primarily because of its location to the substation. Um, across Vermont, one of the things that's becoming very difficult for projects um, of this nature, or really any, any generation project, is interconnecting to the grid. Um, it's becoming challenging to find sites within a reasonable proximity that make it economical and affordable you know, to really uh, uh, plug them in. You're looking um, at the substation on Route 17? It, it, one? The one, it's actually just behind Johnson Lumber. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So really close. Yeah, yeah. really close. Hewitt? Hewitt Road. Yes, yes, okay. Hewitt Road. Thank okay. you. Yep. So that would be the inner. So that would be where we would uh, be taking the lines back to. It's, uh, effectively, what it does is it plugs right into the lines along 116. Um, and then more than likely, what would be done is the lines along 116, the existing lines, would be upgraded just to your standard distribution three-phase lines that you see basically uh, you know, everywhere else. They're just newer. Mm -hmm. um, so that allows us to interconnect uh, easily to the grid. 
Um, so that's one of the things we still need to do. Green Mountain Power is more than likely going to study the interconnection um, after the first of the year, you know, January, February time frame. Uh, so that'll give us another sense of you know, our ability to move forward. Uh, but in the intervening time, really wanted to come to you and see if we can answer any questions, and get any feedback um, you guys may have. And I can answer any questions on timeline as well. I did include a uh, you know, brief overview process of uh, how we envision things moving forward um, and, and general, general timelines for doing so as yeah. well. That's great. Um, All right, I have a question. Sure. Yeah. Um, on the diagram here, I'm trying to decide if that's all farm field or if it's made to look like it's existing farm field. Have you, are there any blocks of trees where you have the panels proposed there? No. So this is all, actually it was all planted for corn this Right. Season. Okay. Yep. Yep. So. I couldn't tell there's a little, you know. Right. No. I know the graphic tricks. I'm yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Right now, it, how we're looking at this is by you utilizing. Utilizing the existing cornfield, you know, we have uh, setbacks, um, you know, on the east and west, so that um, ideally we're not cutting any trees. Um, you know, and we're maintaining, importantly here, um, we will maintain this hedgerow here. You know, this provides, this is a, I don't know if you guys can picture it, but it's a very thick hedgerow that provides a great buffer for, you know, the residences or anyone looking in from 116 as well. Um, so we will absolutely maintain that and, and potentially supplement it, more than likely supplement it as well with mm -hmm. um, additional plantings where necessary. Um, one of our other action items really is going to be, just so you guys know, is to go talk to the neighbors. Um, we're here first, uh, you know, I'm here first before you guys, but um, we'll certainly reach out to every neighbor surrounding the property, get their feedback. Um, and before we go to file our full application, uh, more than likely even before we go to file our 45-day notice, which gives you guys notice that we, we are intending to mm -hmm. submit um, a petition to the uh, Public Service Board, we'll come up with a full landscaping plan for the property as well. Uh, so we normally work with SE Group, actually SE Group uh, produced a, uh, a zoomed out location map in, mm -hmm. in the uh, diagrams there. Um, so we work with SE Group normally to come up with, they come down, they do a full visual analysis, uh, provide a full aesthetics report, and from that react aesthetics report comes a landscaping, mm -hmm. uh, basically a mitigation plan. Mm -hmm. um, so normally, you know, in this particular case, you know, we would ex certainly expect to have a good amount of landscaping on the north side um, to shield some of the views from adjoining residences, and more than likely supplementing some of the existing hedgerow here, and possibly some along the south as well uh, to mitigate views coming in from 116 mm -hmm. also. Where is the, where is the, the Saunders uh, farmstead? Is there, are they at right. the bottom right there? Yeah, yeah right here. So we would, in terms of access, what we are looking to do is basically utilize their existing access. So basically be just putting the gravel down and going right out into their field, utilizing that farm access. Pretty short distance to get there. Yeah, and then a short distance just coming up to our transformer locations there, which are really centralized in the property, so you're you know, not mm -hmm. seeing that, that, mm -hmm. that type of equipment yeah, in mean, your primary view shed either. Yeah. I have a couple questions about sure. this. It's interesting seeing this yeah. diagram here where you act, it's not your typical rectangular field. Right. So uh, is that something that you did uh, to work with the contours or with the, why it's, did you sure. use that shape? Yeah, I'm it's assuming a, it's, it's more organic. It's a, combi it's a combination of things. It's, it's for the same reasons that, you know, we're kind of, you right. know, doing all sorts of things here. It's really a combination of uh, topography, like you said, um, mm -hmm. and also avoiding wetlands. Um, yeah. So on that particular project, that was actually a project that just went operational a few weeks ago um, uh, in cooperation with Green Mountain Power and Global Foundries. Um, so it's in Williston, Vermont on Global yeah. Foundries property. Um, that one is unique in that the wetlands kind of go every which way, right? So they kind of they do dictate, you know, exactly where you're putting these um, putting these things. And, and uh, our best efforts are to really avoid wetlands at all costs. Yeah. It, it makes it easier for us, you know, the agency of natural resource likes it, it makes it easier for all parties really. Um, so that's the goal here, is the goal there, and, and that kind of you know dictates our design. Here we're far enough along also that, you know, in just in terms of our due diligence, that we know where that, those wetlands are, we know how we can avoid them. The state, we did have the state come in and confirm where those wetlands were um, just before the snow fell actually, so we, we had a good idea. and. Uh, yeah, you can know, adequately design a, mm -hmm. design a system based on that information. Okay. Yeah. I have a question of a different sort. Sure. Um, when you enter into a lease relationship with a, a landowner like this, yeah. 
uh, what is the term of the lease? Sure. And is there a is there a kind of uh, life cycle of a project like this where you you say it's going to be in for this many years and right. with a wind power, wind uh, installation and then it comes out or how does that work? Right. Yeah. So exactly. So with the Saunders, for example, yeah. um, the initial term is for twenty five years, and so as a base, we expect the uh, the the system to operate for at least 25 years. More than likely, it'll go well beyond that. Mm -hmm. um, the lease with the Saunders also contains two additional options to extend for five years each, which is normal practice for a system of this mm -hmm. nature as well. So, I, and this is really based on, you know, system life cycle, what we, how long we expect mm -hmm. it to operate. Minimum, it'll operate at least 25 years. Maximum, according to the lease, it would operate 35 years um, at the max. After which point that it would be fully decommissioned, everything would be taken out of the ground and fully restored into farmland. Um, that is the term of the lease. You know where we haven't gotten, where the industry hasn't gotten, truthfully, is you know what happens after that. It's very possible that this very system could have the potential to go longer with without any improvements or with select improvements. But that would have to be renegotiated with the landowners. That would have to be renegotiated <coughs> with the landowners. Yeah. So, so, so just on that note, if yeah. let's say in. 35 years, <clears throat> Gros Solar is no longer around. Right. The, the, the business is. Uh, yep. Um, are the Saunders stuck with no. 35 acres of solar panels? No. no. So, one thing that uh, there, there's a. This is. Um, and I just want to go back to our current uh, current project set with Green Mountain Power. Right now, our current project set with Green Mountain Power, Green Mountain Power being a utility, they actually own those systems that we're constructing for them. They have an obligation to decommission those systems, and you have the Department of Public Service and the Public Service Board backing that up. They're a regulated utility, um, and will do so at, after you know the system right. runs its life. In the case of a private developer, someone like ourselves <laughs> coming in, um, the Public Service Board actually requires a decommissioning fund. Um, so what we do, if it's not the utility owning it, and um, what we do is we back the uh, back this project and basically say, um, you know, we're going to post a surety to, you know, ensure that at the end of its useful life, it is decommissioned. And if, you know, someone like us didn't exist or the long-term owner didn't, whoever didn't exist, the public service board actually has the right to draw on what, what is known as a letter of credit to ensure that there's the money to, money to fully decommission. So Green Mountain actually owns this Facility. Not, Not this, this one. one. No. Um, our other ones they do okay. own. Um, so just to let you know, we we are we, we work closely with Green Mountain Power. We're trying to figure out what the relationship is going forward, whether they're going to own more projects or whether it's a power purchase agreement. So in the case of a power purchase agreement, you know, private developer coming in, <laughs> there's that full you know letter of credit backing that says at the end of you know that 30, 25, 30 year, 35 years. There's money in place to ensure this is. So this, is this would be a private purchase agreement. It's it's it could be either. We're still working that out with Green Mountain Power. I see. I um, see. They're they're basically you know the projects we just finished with them are just coming operational. These are really their first big projects, um, and they're trying to determine whether you know ownership is the correct route or whether you know power purchase agreement, something they've done you know routinely in the past is the preferred route. Um, in either case, we, we do see this as a, as a very promising project, and those are the type of details you know, that we still need to work out, get that box checked on our end. Um, but in either scenario, you, you can rest assured that there's, there's money there to take it out at the end That's of the term. Do you, Please, you. You're the developer, but do you actually build, or do you? We do, yeah. So gross, I, sorry, I should have mentioned. So we're a full turnkey developer. We do everything from origination all the way through operation and maintenance. So for these projects, any project that we develop, we build. And we also uh, maintain the operation and maintenance um, contract on the system. So for the Green Mountain Power projects, we developed all those. We built all those, the ones that are currently up coming operational, and then we have the operation maintenance contract on them. So we're out there, you know, it, luckily these things don't require much operation and maintenance, but you know, you do go out there, you know, once a month or, or you know, responding to an emergency if there is one to make sure everything's working. There's certain, there are certain cleaning protocols and things of that nature on an annual basis as well. So we're, yeah, we're involved in the, for the long term of these projects. Yeah. Did you have a question? Please feel free to ask. So yeah. you... Green Mountain, you charge Green Mountain. If so it's a private. 
here. Yeah, yeah, and it, it can work a multi. It, it works a lot of different ways. You know, if they're going to own it, we're purely providing them basically a construction price. Um, whereas if you know we're going to own it, then it's a power purchase agreement, and similar to what you would see on your bill, they pay to us. You know, a certain amount based on your kilowatt hour. Of generation. What about the maintenance underneath? It's, it's grass grows or whatever. Yep, yep, you, grass you grows. Handle that? Yep, we you handle that. Uh, chemicals? Nope, no. Nope. Usually, what it is is we mow probably twice a year. Um, so you don't want the you know the panels are about thirty six inches off the ground. So you don't want the grass growing up farther than yep. that. You want it to you know make be healthy, and you gotta you gotta mow it every once in a while. But uh, now I've heard in the past. Contamination. I've heard other people that own land. If there's contamination, is that cleaned up after 35 years? Certainly, uh, certainly the project removed. owner would be surely, certainly the project owner would be responsible for that. We've never seen contamination um, in a project of this nature. Often, where some of the confusion though around contamination is with a different type of panel. Um, there's some. There's always you know. I, I often get questions about cadmium panels. Yeah, these aren't those. <laughs> in the really thin film um, panels, which are basically things that you can, solar cells that you can roll out, those are made with a very different kind of material, um, cadmium. These are silicon based. Um, so that's where often I get the contamination questions. But with this type of project, um, the, there's really, we don't have that. That's so when this project ends, mm -hmm. you, you remove the panels? Absolutely, yes. And any. If there's a contamination in the soil, oh yeah, then you then you would absolutely. And that's guaranteed to the landowner itself. Yes, in in the lease document, absolutely. Yeah, we're liable if we if we cause anything like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I have two questions. Sure. One is I understand that the uh, the amount of money that utilities are willing to pay per kilowatt hour mm -hmm. is going down. Yeah. So that puts a project like this, mm -hmm. you know, one thing that you have to think about, are you going to have enough money for, to be viable? Right. I'd like you to answer that one. Sure. My second question is, um, 20 years ago, the efficiency rate was like 15% or 20%. What is it today? Yeah. Yeah. So we're up to about a capacity factor. This is probably about 20%. Actually, this is higher than 20% being a single axis tracker. Mm -hmm. um, Single axis tracker, just on just to give you the the economic sense of it, is probably we gain about fifteen percent more production compared to a fixed tilt system, at about less than five percent additional cost. Um, mm -hmm. So that a having a single axis tracker system here can drive those economics in our favor, and, and basically as the you know kilowatt hour. Um, uh, dollar figure is coming down. Yeah. yeah, the overall economics based on the generation of the project are 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 are, are staying in line with that. Um, we've seen, you know, and that's really a factor of a the technology single axis tracker are, are now viable, mm -hmm. and b um, the total cost of this system. We've seen a tremendous decline um, in prices for the total installed costs. Um, notably, panel prices have come down tremendously just in the past. You know. Forget two years. Just in the past six months, we've seen a tremendous decline. Are these mostly Chinese? They come from a variety. You know, they could come from China, Germany, you know, South Korea, um, you know, the U.S. They come from a number of <laughs> number of uh, number of places. I think you know what's proposed. Just to give you a, a sense of what's proposed here, um, you know, right now we have Hanwha Panels, which is actually a German company, um, so they can come from a number of a, a number of locations. Yeah. Any other questions? Just. To is the picture the scope and the scale of this is sure. It, this is very fairly massive. I mean, the number is that sixteen thousand panels. It is, yeah, and that's a that's a. I don't want to give it. it it's a. It can be a deceiving number, and you know, it actually, I mean, it's thirty five acres. Remember, you said you're looking. At oh yeah, this is not a small project. No question about it. Um, but in just in terms of how the panels are calculated, I want to give you a sense of that. If you look at these pictures, that just the number of panels can sometimes be deceiving because they are really. You know, they're, they're put right up next to each other. So there are, yes, 16,000 plus panels, but there are 82 panels on one rack. 
So basically, if we're looking at one rack right here, this is 82 panels basically put right up against each other. Um, and that's what we can see in, in this picture here as well on the uh, recent tracker project that we did. So, but I, no, by no means is this a small project. This is certainly one of the larger projects um, Vermont will have seen. Panton, um, you know, our, our, our more recent five, uh, five megawatt projects are currently the largest operating projects in Vermont. And this would be similar size. So. Is, is there uh, something to do with Prime agriculture land yes. that prevents this sort of project? Um, so we certainly have to consider prime agricultural lands, both prime statewide, anything of that nature. The benefit of this project, and, and just give you a sense of generally how it's constructed as well, is these are really um, H-beams or W-beams driven into the ground so that we're minimizing ground disturbance. We're not coming in there and grading what well, we're not doing. We're not taking prime agricultural soil off of this land, any soil. Um, existing on here stays on here. Um, so, in other words, you know, we're, we're not coming here, and if, if we're excavating for a road, that you know, the remaining soil is being spread on site and, and remains there um, because we certainly are sensitive to the you know the, the prime agricultural lands and, and the overall purpose of this too is when it's decommissioned, it's restored to you know what it was before, and keeping soils on site is part of that. It does not have, have to go at, through. Oh. It does not have to go through Active 50. No, it goes through it, it goes through the, the public, public service board. Yeah. But I, it, what it does, what the public service board considers, are basically the same Act 250 criteria. Right. Um, so they're looking at you know the same factors, wetlands, you know rare plants, prime ag, anything of that nature. They're looking at that um, to see you know overall effect, and that doesn't result in benefit to the state. If you look but again, at, at the end of the day, sure. It, the, Public Service Board makes this decision. You're here just purely to give us information. The, we as a board, we as a town, have no, other than to show up at the public hearing and make a statement, there is absolutely nothing in, in our jurisdiction. Is that a correct statement? Do we, in in any case, we're here to give you a say. Um, I will say that right now. You know, if, if you're looking for you know, landscaping, do you have any opinions on the project? You know, whether or not it's in statute, we want to hear from you. Yeah, there's just no question in our mind. You know, with the past um, projects we're just finishing up, um, every one of those we've worked with the town. We worked successfully with the town to get either letters of support or you know work with them to figure out where there were issues, figure out how we could address them. So you know, regardless of what the statute says, I can I can tell you we're here to work with yeah. them. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad you come to speak with us and, and yeah, no, the I conversation will go on. Yeah, so. because uh, this is an important issue and it's, it's yeah, great. I do have one it's more, great to have the conversation. I do have one yeah. more question. Sure. Right. So it is it's very large. Yes. What determined the size and right. who who because it's your project, so you saw this opportunity to make this really large project sure. hopefully successful because of the land and because of the site. Right. Is, is that, I mean, is there anything more behind that? Yeah, so there, 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 I would say there's two factors that determine the size of this particular mm -hmm. project. One being, yes, available land, uh, mm -hmm. you know, suitable land. Can we fit everything down there after we do our wetlands delineation and, and, and define our you know, uh, limits? Mm -hmm. Two is uh, probably a less obvious one is um, the five megawatt AC limit um, at the regional level. Um, there's something the regional grid operator level. There's something called ISO New England. ISO New England is the regional grid operator. Once you go over five megawatts AC, the regional grid operator says, "Wait a second, guys. Now I got to be involved um, because mm -hmm. you're creating a project that's not large enough to have a regional impact." on the grid infrastructure. Um, what these projects are, these projects are a little bit different in that ISO New England basically says, you know, these are distributed generation projects, they're on a local level, you guys manage them how you'd like. So on that level we're working you know, solely with Green Mountain Power, Green Mountain Power is, it views them as a more load reducer um, as opposed to something at the more regional level where they're um, you know, have, 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 a, have a different impact in the eyes, of the eyes of the grid operator. So once you get into the bigger projects on the AC side, you trigger a, 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 an assessment that is um, very lengthy, mm -hmm. very expensive, 
and you know, that some of the I know we've seen a number of projects proposed by others who are on the 20 megawatt scale around the state, um, and 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 those uh, certainly have regional impact. Are going to take years to study and come at it. So this comes cost. in under that. This comes in under that. It's more of a what we would call a distributed mm -hmm. uh, generation project. So connecting right to the three phase distribution and going right back to Green Mountain Power substation and Green Mountain Power manages that generation how they see fit and it acts as an overall load reducer and for them as well. So. Are, are we um, odd, I mean I know in Arizona mm -hmm. they have thousands of acres oh, yeah. that are loaded with these. Yeah. Do, are they, are they pre presented with the same problems with the grid operator? It, so, uh, yes, essentially. Um, our ISO New England grid operator is basically geared towards New England. Around the country, you have different grid operators for different territories. So, Texas, for example, has its own. <laughs> they operate their entire own grid and manage it how they see fit. They're just big enough to do so. ISO New England region, regional impact, smaller area. Um, but you know, generation is important you know, for, from various states. California has its own, um, and then in the Midwest there's several states. So each grid operator has their own triggers, own studies, um, but you know, it, it's a similar thing. If you're building a big project, the regional grid operator is going to know, um, is going to want to know. If you're building a distributed gener generation project, um, you know, it's more geared towards your local utility, reducing you know, the overall load and providing yeah, you know, uh, generation more at the, at the local level. Thank you. Yes. How does this affect the neighboring, that you know, the surrounding neighbors? How does this affect their power? It uh, so it would not affect their power. It does not. No, affect this their power. this a system of this size goes right back into the grid and feeds okay. and uh, you know provides service to all Green Mountain Power right. uh, uh, customers. Do, does the um, the number of panels affect uh, issues of permeability in terms of uh, the rainwater? Does it does it Right, so this is, so uh, short answer, the panels themselves do not. Um, the only impervious surface um, is really the, the so it's a, a few things. It's A, the H-beams that are driven into the ground, that's considered an impervious surface. And then the equipment pads or transformer pads, mm -hmm. um, and in addition, you know, mm -hmm. access mm -hmm. drive would be considered impervious as mm -hmm. well. And these, again, you know, they're, they're unique that are, they're rotating throughout the day. And at any one point, they could be at um, an angle of, um, a maximum angle of up to 60 degrees. Um, so, you know, pretty, pretty good tilt mm -hmm. when you're mm -hmm. looking at it. And then they'll rotate to 60 degrees the other way throughout the day. Great. I realize this is on 116, this sure. project. Did you look at Saunders' other land over on the Carlston Road? Over on the Carlston Road? Too close to it's a larger yeah, to to area. To to to, okay, yeah, I guess I'm not familiar with... Get to right, if it's, oh, if it's over on... If it's over closer to the mountain, it would certainly have a large effect on, <laughs> on shading. I'm not familiar with the property in particular. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah. And your company's out of where? White River Junction? Okay. okay. Yeah, so it's local. Yeah. You had said, when we came to my office to meet sure. you, kind of explained how you came to this chunk of land. Right. A little bit of them, a little bit of you. Yeah, it, 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 it's a, it, it works both ways a lot of the times. Usually, we, often we have landowners that reach out directly to us, or you know, we're often ex, you know, exploring a variety of opportunities. I actually don't recall, I think the Saunders came to us with the initial land opportunity, I believe, or we, we may have made initial contact, but um, probably about six months ago or so, we, we, we started getting things going and, and uh, just talking to see if, mm -hmm. if something, was, something was possible and see if we could some, make something work on, on the land side as well. So, um, but it works a number of ways. You know, we have people coming to us throughout the state and um, seeing if uh, you know, there's, there's viable opportunities. Well, thank you very much for yeah. telling us what you're up to, and we would appreciate it if you sure. stay in contact with us, and, yeah. and we'd love to be able to yeah. be part of the conversation and give you our feedback as Absolutely. things go forward. Yeah, no, we would really appreciate that, and just in terms of next steps, I, I, I mentioned Green Mountain Power is going to study and the interconnection of the system, make sure that that's viable, viable from that perspective. If all goes well and, and we have, you know, 
a vision to move forward and we next steps would be to release a 45 day notice you may have seen them for for other solar projects and basically letting you know what we're proposing it it, it would essentially be what you know we have here with a little more detail as well um, I would also like to you know probably pretty soon um, get the landscape architect involved see uh, come up with a plan and put that in front of you guys too to see if we can get any comments and um, we're also going to go talk to the neighbors and, you know, when towns receive a 45-day uh, notification like right. that, do they tend to call a public meeting at that point? Is that a common thing to do? Um, we've seen it a few different ways. I think sometimes, so we'd be happy to host a public meeting yeah. if you guys like to. Mm -hmm. you guys would like to do that. Um, the Public Service Board eventually will host their own public meeting, but at that point, you know, truthfully, we, 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 we like to do those things well in advance. Yeah. And, um, you know, they, theirs is more, it, it's a formality where, you know, they in particular want to hear from the public, um, but, you know, we would very much appreciate hosting a public meeting where we get that input, you know, ahead of that, be able to incorporate things into, you know, landscaping designs or anything of that nature, um, you know, and, and really really know what the project is going to look like even before we get to that point. Great. Eric, I don't, have, we don't, I don't have a good map of it yeah. with me. Um, floodplain, how are they? They've got to be... Uh, we're, yeah, most of the floodplain is on the other. Uh, they're tied to the road. Yeah. 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 I just want to make sure I've used that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Because, because where I was going with this is what's the mitigation for that if it is? Because yeah. technically, yeah. you can build it in a floodplain, yeah. Yeah. So, but... What is, yeah. what is your mitigation? We would not build in the floodplain anymore. I can tell you five years ago, maybe even a little bit less, they would have. It's a little bit, when you get into floodplain, you're looking at a, at a very different system often because you're often a ballasted system, so you're using concrete blocks to place the system. It becomes a lot more expensive and, and we, we avoid it. Okay, that's <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was like, ah, God. Yeah. You know, pe people were doing it until recently, but it, it's it's expensive and uh, yeah, we try to avoid it. Great. Yeah. What is your timetable on this project? Sure, so I think timeline, our next step, we really would like to get the review from Green Mountain Power on the interconnection perspective. If all goes well, we would anticipate releasing a 45 day notice after we talk to the neighbors again, and come up with an initial landscaping plan. Releasing a 45 day notice, probably best guess, Early February, and that's a best timeline. Um, and there's a, you know, a, there's a lot of development tasks that go into it after that time frame too. Um, and that just really, basically, all, all that does is start the clock, gives others an opportunity to comment who may or may not have heard about the project. Hopefully, everyone's heard about it, you know, before that time. Um, so that notification would probably come to Eric, and he would let us know about it, so that we could respond as actually, as well. yeah, actually, it would be addressed to both the select board and the planning. Commission. Okay, so are you saying two years, three years, four years? This would be so in terms of construction, um, we would likely be ready to construct um, towards the spring, I would say, of 2018. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's mm -hmm. what I was saying. Well, well, thanks again for coming, Lincoln. Yeah. We appreciate it. We look forward to hearing how it develops and, Absolutely. and, uh, and being part of the process. Absolutely. So, thank, thanks great. a lot. Would it be helpful if I, I could leave this with you guys? I think if, it would be uh, good to have it. Great. Yeah, yeah. that would be great. Good. Eric needs more. I need more. Time. He's he's got Eric one already. Right 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 not that not that big. numbers are down. If we could take these for the rest of the yeah, 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 absolutely. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, appreciate your response. And just so you know, my contact is on the back. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, give me a call. And uh, we'll be in touch. I mean, I'll, uh, you know, we're going to continue working with the landowners, the landscaping. As soon as we have that landscaping plan, I imagine we'll be in touch again. So, that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> All right, great. Okay, thanks appreciate a lot. Time. We appreciate you. yours. You're right. Okay, so uh, that was an informal hearing. We didn't open it, and we're not going to close it. We're going to move along here. Um, now, I have to ask you guys, and, and Eric, I want you to weigh in too, as uh, our de facto parliamentarian. Number five, as we refer to Bill Sayers, is upstairs in the uh, revolving loan committee. Um, we have two things here that will require a vote. Um, the nomination of Eric for a second three-year term and the approval of the minutes. I would like to request that we vote on those things here. I go upstairs and get Bill's vote, just so that... I mean, honestly, the approval of the minutes, we can punt that to the next meeting. The meeting minutes 
Yeah, meeting minutes can. We've done that before where we've waited okay. a while. But I think, but I don't think we want to pump the nomination. And I'm not even going to vote on the meeting. I wasn't at that meeting. Okay. Well, actually, you can if you feel that it's. That you think that they were That's right. We, if, you, if it seems plausible. In, in, in but it, but but I I do think we should vote on Eric's nomination, and I think that Bill's voice should be heard. So I could just ask him for the minutes at the same time. If, if if it's okay with you guys, I'd like to vote. If four of us are in agreement, I would go up and get his vote so that we would it would be official. No, then there's a couple of interesting administrative matters. Let's go through we're, those we're, and see where Bill is, and then there's the off chance his meeting will be finished. Is, oh, is that okay with everybody? I yes. doubt it from the look of that table. <laughs> However, it's just as fine for me on administrative matters. Yeah, it's not really administrative. Well, I, I don't know. It's, it's something I wanted to bring up. Fine. Let me. Let, I've got a couple of mine. Let me tell you what first. they are. They won't take long. I wanted to share with you um, uh, what happened in the select board. So Sue and I both went to two meetings of the select board. Uh, they received our proposed document. They changed it in two main ways. The first one was that there was no longer a Daniels Four Corner overlay zone. The second one was that in the okay, <laughs> feel free to stay. It's a scintillating meeting. You like it a lot. You sat there one. You don't want to sit through another one. Yeah. Uh, so the the. The second one was in Rockydale. We had made Rockydale RA1. Rockydale is really a weird place. It, it's sort of like the, the Wild West. A little bit of everything happens here. So they asked Eric and, and me to meet with them the next morning to see what to do. And we said, well, look, I, as a member of the select board, am not able to recommend anything on behalf of the select board. We've had our discussion. We've made our vote. At the planning commission. Now that, yeah, that was not wishful thinking you to believe me. Uh, we've had our, so I'll, I'll be here to answer questions in terms of what I think we've said about zoning, and Eric's here, but it's your decision because you own it now. And so anyway, what they did, and, and I think both of us felt it was a reasonable thing, was to divide the land that is... Uh, that is south of 116 in Rocky Dale. That that is now uh, commercial. Village mix. mix. And and uh, north of uh, of 116 is now RA1. So so there are still lots of non-conforming uses on both sides of the road. But we got rid of a few non-conforming uses, and that seemed they got rid of it. So that's what's happened. That that those are the two big changes in the uh, in the planning document. Thanks for your your good questions and comments. Yeah, we're closed. Well, I I think <laughs> you should be interested. It's a big project. I or agree. Take from your goodies too. Well, you should. She said, go over there. Take take a long set of Yeah. Well, I think I, too. I just moved them because they were in the way. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. Go was was the the solar advertised? Uh, no, that was an informal project that we heard about that, at the that end. That, that was not part of our official business. He just wanted to come and talk mm -hmm. to us. Mm -hmm. He kind of exactly. thanked me last time. I'm time. glad you did too. Yeah. That's very timely. Um, yeah, he had just happened to contact me last week. Oh, no, they? So I just, okay. to get it out there as quick as we could. Yeah, it was not advertised and not, not official, but I'm glad you were here for it too. Cause you, very interesting. Yeah. Well, it is interesting. We're glad we can. Yeah. We, we wish Rick all on his project. Yeah. There were neighbors to him. Well, thanks for coming. Okay. I'm glad we've rewarded you. Merry Christmas. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you, I think. Cheers. See you, Tim. Bye. I do. Yeah, you guys had a great fire last night? Oh, yes. <laughs> Okay. Was, this, was this an on purpose training fire? No. No, no, no we're sitting in the select board meeting, finishing up, and the tongues go off. And Myself and three select board members get up and leave. Yeah, we just left. They had to adjourn sort of on the fly. And then we were in Lincoln last night until, I don't know, I got to bed about 3 o'clock this morning. Wow. Well, but you got, you got to bed heavy there. That's what we do. So, so uh, anyway, um, we're going we're gonna, to, oh, administrative matters. That's what we're doing. Yes. So, so those were the two changes they made. Everything else was accepted. Um, the two, they made up another. I'm a camper. 
<laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Campers have to they they have to hear the front setback, the but not the side. Of the yeah. setback. And then the two and a half ton vehicles, they struck that out. That's right. That's right. Unless Thank your vehicle you. stayed in race cars. Stay Correct. Yeah, you know, those happened right away, so I've forgotten about those. Yeah. So but the good. others took a little longer, uh, although not not too much longer. Uh, and so then the, uh, they met last night, and they agreed uh, to send it on for a vote with those changes. So that's where it stands. Okay, uh, do I have any other administrative matters? We're going to look for the the next meeting and we're going to try for... John has January we're, we're on the select board yes. as well. Yeah. They also did the town plan as well. Yes, they did. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. Good. That, that's a very important point. Um, okay, uh, you have a comment under Mr. Uh, Lee's. Yeah, I guess it's not really administrative matters. It really has to do with the right aid, but, I, but we're, I didn't want to hold things up. It's just another, and I've actually talked to you about it before. It's about the, the sign and the lit sign. And this, this does have to do with the co-housing project, but it came up in discussion there, and I just wanted to throw it out in terms of that their big sign being lit all night long. Mm -hmm. What do our regulations say about that? Should that be turned off at a certain time? Could it be turned off at a certain time? Because it's you know a big like lighted sign right in the back, which was screened by planting before, and there will be more planting, but it might be. It was screened by. Oh, it, because, because, the, because the, it, the it, goes, it goes through the co-housing now. Is that is that the thing? It, it goes actually before the houses went up. I remember looking out my window saying, what is that big light out there? And because it doesn't even, you know, it's not even fully lit. It's only half lit because <laughs> half of it is out. Yeah. And so it's just something to think about, something to check into the regs. Yeah. Should right those... Yeah, kind of generic ones. You guys have been pretty specific in the new ones about working hours and business hours. Yeah, but 10 o'clock. Well, but that would also fall, in my mind, That's a that would be a pre-existing... That that's been there. It goes back to the screening of the dumpster. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, it, it, it. I mean, the sign was there before the blue book version of the zoning was there, and it's been a lit sign there since. Well, it's just something. 70s. I'm I'm not coming saying we need to. You just want to know how it relates to the wrecks. Could we? I mean, what is it? I mean, we certain. I guess I'll have an we. informal discussion with them when I go talk to them about their. Screening. Well, that's that's what I was they going to it. ask if we're going to. Like to have a conversation, there, could that get brought up a request? Is there another house going in uh, to the co-housing that would be in that gap? I'm just wondering whether, is there no. another house plan is on it, that? No. No, the, the last house No, it's actually the, the light goes into Ruth's old house. That's, that's the building that it's shining into, and it's because of the, the, the hedge that became more canopy trees, the evergreens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There is going to be planting put in there mm -hmm. but it's just it's kind of glaring yeah. right in that back so it was just something that got brought up and i just wanted to bring it up yeah. guys would you, know, you like would you like to uh, and i thought uh, since your, there's your, a dialogue happening yeah. with the right oh, aid yeah. why not broach the subject and yeah. say is it possible you know would you be willing to do this because since it's not in our regs or whatever you know i'm yeah, yeah. okay but good to pass along and, he's, and Eric will bring yeah. it up when he talks to him. That sounds good. Any other administrative matters people have questions about? We've already had our public comments. Before adjournment, however, we have two votes. Yeah. Uh, and the first one is uh, to consider Eric's nomination for a second three-year term as zoning administrator. This is a recommendation we make to the select board, which makes the decision. Any motion? Yeah. Um, so moved. The second? I second that. Any discussion? I, I would like to say that I think we're darn lucky to have a person of Eric's caliber and uh, dedication in this job. Just want to say. Shall we vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now for the approval of the minutes. And if you look at them and you think it seems plausible, we've done this in the past, and you see no, no reason to withhold your, your uh, uh, affirmation, we could do that. Does anybody want to uh, move the approval of the minutes for November fifteenth? So moved. 15th? So moved. Second. Mm -hmm. Oh, I. I'm not going to second it. Who's second? I'm not seconding it. Build it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Any other discussion? I mean, they they look fine. They look good. 
I thought that could. I'm saying that more for so that Katie now yeah. feel that she's making an educated vote. That, that's right. right. No, I forgot. I forgot. This other thing was in here. So. Saying it looks good. Yeah, it looks that good. makes you think it's pretty good. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, all in favor? Uh, I need to go ask Bill for both these things, and we're almost done. As soon as I get back, and I'll I'll move rapidly. Not too rapidly. Not too rapidly. Just rapidly enough. Votes for uh, both. recommending for both for recommending Eric's renomination. Uh, five votes for approval of the minutes. We are down to the last item, which is adjournment. So Any moved. motions? So moved. To a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Congratulations, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I still get to this left one. Thank you.